Hello, everybody. Today, I'm going to cover the problem number four of week five, sieve of Erephosphenes. The sieve of Erephosphenes is a method of finding prime numbers under a max value n by eliminating all possible composite numbers. The algorithm does so by starting with the smallest prime number, which is, of course, two, and eliminating every number from two to n, which is divisible by two. Then we do the same with the next smallest number that has not yet been eliminated, which is going to be three. And we continue this process uh, until we run out of numbers. And all numbers that were not eliminated are therefore not composite and prime. Uh, the next few lines are very important for understanding the implementation of this problem. Therefore, I'll use a marker to show the most uh, crucial lines for solving this problem. We need to implement this algorithm in Java using an integer array such that if a number is prime, the value at the corresponding index is minus one. Otherwise, the value recorded is that of the smallest prime number that it was divisible by. So let's mark this line too. And the values recorded at zero and one are arbitrary. So let's just say that we'll use the value zero for the values recorded at index zero and one. Uh, on the right side of the page, you can see uh, two examples of, of this algorithm and its result when our n is equal to five and eight. So let's cover the first example. The indexes, uh, uh, the first two indexes, zero and one, they're going to have the value zero because the prompt says that they can be arbitrary. So I just went with zero. But of course you can have your own value uh, and it's not going to affect the implementation in any way. The element at index two, is going to be minus one because two is a prime number. And the element at index three is going to be minus one, two because it's not a composite number. And the element at index four is going to be two. Why? Because two has, uh, four has been eliminated uh, when we were doing uh, this algorithm with our first prime number two. And let's look at the next example when our array is a bit larger. Uh, the first five values are going to be the same as in our last example, uh, but the changes start from the index five. So at this index, we're going to have uh, the value minus one because five is a prime number. And at the index six, it gets a bit tricky because as we know, six is equal to two multiplied by three. So which number here we need to choose? Uh, the prompt says that uh, the smallest prime number that it was divisible by has to be in that index if the number is composite. And, six, and since six is composite, we need to put two because the two, uh, is the first prime number that six was divisible by. And at the index seven, we're going to have minus one because seven is a prime number. Of course, feel free to show these examples to your students because I feel like in this problem, it's very hard to understand without having proper examples. And here is the problem. It's as we can see, there are quite a few lines that we need to fill out. So let's start from the first. Uh, the, the very first line is going to be the creation of the integer array result that we're going to fill in value by value. And of course, it's going to be of the size n because we need to consider every value from 0 to n minus 1 included. Next line, we'll create an integer which we'll call current. And of course, it will denote the current number that we are on. And the problem says that we're going to start with the first prime number, two. 
So let's do just that. The next line in the solution is actually not needed. So feel free to ignore it. Uh, and here we have two for loops and two if conditions. Since we're again, uh, considering every number from two to n, and we don't need to change the values at indexes zero and one, since this call will actually create an integer array full of zeros of size n minus, uh, of size n. Therefore, uh, since we don't need to change the values at the first two indexes, uh, we don't need to manipulate them at all. So it just makes sense to start from the index two. So let's create our integer i, which is going to be from, which is going to uh, cover every value in our array uh, from two to n minus one included. Uh, and the next if condition is, I believe the most trickiest line in this problem. Uh, so, if the number in our array has not yet been covered, it's going to be zero. By not yet covered, I mean it wasn't eliminated by our previous iteration. So let's consider uh, an array of size, let's say five, I believe will be okay. And let's mark all of those indices. 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So since we start with 2, we're going to mark it minus 1. And 3 is going to be minus 1, 2. But since 4 is actually, no, let, uh, let's do it the other way around. So let's uh, first focus on 2 and eliminate every number that is divisible by 2. And here we're going to change four to minus one. And since we're done with our current prime number, we can jump to the next one. And the next one will be the next i where the value uh, at this index is equal to zero. So we can implement this in, by using the following lines. So if result i was equal equal to zero, we're going to change our current to this i and result i at this index is going to become minus one. Because that means that our uh, current is a prime number. The next for loop is going to be responsible for doing this. It's going to start with the smallest prime number and eliminate, actually, no, eliminate every number from two to n, which is divisible by two. And here, instead of two, we're going to uh, use the current number that we are on. So for integer k, starting from 2, we're going to change every uh, number that is multiple of prime and we can do so by using this call. I hope that it makes sense because here, essentially, the first number that we eliminate is going to be k multiplied by current. So actually, we can write it down this way. Two current, three current, four current, et cetera, et cetera. And you may ask yourself, what about one multiplied by current? What about the element at this index? But we already covered it here. And if uh, result k multiplied by current is equal equal to zero, 
we're going to change. Okay, multiplied by curve. Let me actually just write curve, but of course it means current. We're going to change the result at this index to our current number. And at the end, we need to return the resulting array. Of, and uh, let me explain what these lines are going to do. So if you remember, we need to put the smallest prime that our number was divisible by at that index. So to not cross out uh, the result of our previous loop, we need to check if the value at this index is equal, equal to zero. Because of course, the uh, example of six at the index six shows us that even though six is divisible by three, and we're going to encounter it after we finish changing the uh, uh, the in uh, the three to minus one, go and jump next box, which uh, but we can't change it because it was already filled by two. Check if our uh, 